I like big pearls and I cannot lie. But how much does pearl size affect value? And what do the sizes even mean? And how much of the pearl is just the bead that was inserted during the nucleation process? And why does that matter to the pearl shopper? There's a common misconception that pearls form naturally around a grain of sand because it irritates the mollusk. Pearl formation has historically been a really misunderstood concept. From people believing that pearls were formed by lightning strikes, to believing they formed when rainbows touched the water, and that pearls were dewdrops falling into the ocean under the moonlight. None of these theories make sense. But pearls form naturally in mollusks when the epithelial cells have been displaced, such as in the case of damage to the mantle tissue, from injury from, say, a parasite or something. These mantle cells continue to produce what makes up the shell just inside of the pearl sac. So you end up getting a variety of shapes of natural pearls. The materials that make up a mollusk's shell, and consequently a pearl, are calcite and aragonite. You may have seen aragonite crystals before. These are teeny tiny. They're beautiful. So the way these teeny tiny crystals interact with light affects a pearl's luster, which we explained in our video featuring the one and a half million dollar pearl strand. Link below. It's probably up there too, somewhere. We call this calcite aragonite material nacre. And in the case of cultured or farmed pearls, that nacre forms around a nucleus that is inserted or grafted by a pearl technician. This is why cultured pearls are referred to as having a bead in the center. It's not a plastic bead from Hobby Lobby. It can actually be multiple different things, but it's often organic material from another mollusk, like mussel shell. So this nucleus does not mean you have a fake pearl. It means that your very real pearl was created by a very real mollusk with human intervention. Jeremy Shepard, owner of Pearl Paradise, founder of PearlGuide.com, and co-author of CPAA's Pearls as One online educational course, is going to explain what every pearl shopper needs to understand about pearl nacre thickness and pearl size. Most listeners are probably accustomed to seeing Akoya pearls cost, you know, maybe $500, $1,000, maybe even more, you know, as the quality goes up for a small strand. You can buy pearls, Akoya pearls, for $50 a strand, $60 a strand, but it's like the beads took a bath in an oyster and then jumped out. It's almost like a soap film over the surface of this bead. It's not real, real nacre. This is where you start to get the difference in, in value and the difference in, in cost. If you are looking at an Akoya Pearl strand and you're saying, look, I want a seven millimeter strand and my budget is going to be $150. Well, guess what? You can get that, but your nacre is going to be 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeters thick. Within a year of normal wear, you'll start to see the nacre disappear. It, it's sad because people don't really realize sometimes that they're not actually wearing pearls anymore. The nacre has pretty much just disappeared. And although they think they look pretty, what they're really seeing is just the beads that were put inside the oyster. And so, yes, you can buy a, a cheap $100, $150 strand of seven millimeter pearls, but you can also spend well over $1,000 for that exact same size. The value is just, I mean, it's its night and day. <laughs> I like big pearls and I cannot lie. You know pearls are measured in millimeter sizes, right? And it's the diameter of the pearl that determines really the cost for the most part if all other factors are equal. If the surface is the same, color is the same, luster is the same, all factors are equal, size is what determines the value. Now, I thought this would be good to share because it's a question I get a lot, which people don't really understand until they see it. Is there really that much of a difference in a millimeter? Does it really make sense to go up a millimeter? Is anybody gonna be able to tell the difference? Yes, there's a math formula. One of my friends on Pearl Guide, Loretta, Pearl Dreams, the admin of Pearl Guide, posted this formula a few years ago that is still one I use to this day. What it does is it calculates the volume of a pearl instead of just the millimeter size of a pearl. Let's take a seven millimeter pearl, for example. You take a seven millimeter pearl and you divide it by two, you get the radius. Half the size of seven millimeters is 3.5 millimeters. You take 3.5 millimeters and you cube it. You multiply that by pi, you take that and you multiply it by four and then divide it by three and you come up with the volume. So basically a seven millimeter pearl has a volume of approximately 180 cubic millimeters. A 14 millimeter pearl has over 1400 cubic millimeters millimeters. So there's a 700% difference between a seven millimeter pearl and a 14 millimeter pearl. And on this side, 
you've got a 5.5 millimeter, 6.5, 7.5, 8.5, 9.5, 10.5 millimeter pearl. And on the other side, 13, 14, 16. This is only one millimeter of difference. This is supposedly only double the size, right? If you're only looking at millimeters and saying five and a half versus 11, then you would think a lot of millimeter would be twice the size of a five and a half, right? And so if you want to increase this size by about 50%, adding about another um, five, six millimeters to it, then you're going to this size. So five and a half up to about 17 millimeters, just under 17 here, you're really seeing a difference of 3x if you're only calculating the millimeter size, right? 5.5 millimeters versus almost 17 millimeters. It's really just about three times the size. Does that look like three times the size to you? And so a 5.5 millimeter pearl here has got about 65 cubic millimeters. This one, about 2,600. 